All right, this is RXB 2015, and uh, as you can see, there it is, it's extended basic. So first off, we'll do some tests here. Uh, I want to start off with the auto load, and so the auto load goes like this: an extended basic, and hit the two, and look for disk one load. If it finds it, it loads it. And RXB, it looks for disk one load also, but you can press a number, and it'll go to that disk. Now it takes a little longer because it's also looking for a key. Some of the keys you can use, this just reloads it. Like if I say 2, it'll look for disk 2 and it doesn't find it. Or you get the space bar and it bypasses the load. Oops. So this space bar bypasses it, say. So let's say that I want to go with, uh, we'll do this again, I'll restart it. And this time we'll go to zero. If I press zero, it's the same thing as if I did this. Pressing zero does that. It looks for WDS1 load. This will work on the SCSI or it will work on the uh, SCSI, in other words, or the uh, HFDC drive. So this should work with MESS just fine. So anyways, and of course it errors out. If it doesn't find it, but it doesn't show you the error if it doesn't find it. So extended basic does the same thing. If it can't find discord load, then it doesn't do anything. Anyway, so RxB does the same thing. The difference is when RxB goes to a different one like like let's say nine, it'll find the file and then load it. So you can press nine, A, B, C, D, whatever letter you want. One letter tells it what drive to go to. So anyways, that's that. So that's the auto load. Oh, oh something else. Let's go just uh, by. So if we go to a period key and press that on the black screen, it'll go to uh, extended basic. So you can go either way, this way, or you can go back to uh, editor assembler just by pressing the period key. So those keys in the RXB now, so it looks more like extended basic with a few features. So it shouldn't be anything anybody could complain about. Uh, let's see now, next thing. Let's go with size. In extended basic, size works like this. It shows you the bytes, the stack free, program space free. If I go call in it, it does not show you the amount of simulating space free. Uh, you don't get that. You have no idea. RxB on the other hand is different. Uh, RxB shows you that the bytes free, the stack free, the assembly space free. Now at the moment that's the full 8K. 8192 is two, uh, the full four, uh, eight, lower 8K is empty. And then there's 240 banks of 4K pages of AMS memory. So if I go call in it, Do a size again. Now it returns the assembly language space free because the edit has loaded some file from uh, support. So if you load a program and do size in RxB, it'll tell you how much program space you have free because it updates that uh, that amount. So that's a cool feature that I've got already added to RxB. So let's go with the next one: character sets. So if I go for a equal zero to 255 print a oh, character this will print out all the characters So this is the normal extended basic character set. And as you can see, it's just a, a lowercase version of the regular extended basic. The extended basic has the lowercase, smaller version of the uppercase. Uh, RxB has a set that are, um, first off, the cursor is different. Instead of a black square, I picked this. Uh, the, um, the other characters are a little bit different if you look between the two screens. You can see a difference. Uh, not all of them. A lot of them look exactly the same. Uh, the difference is the lowercase. 
uh, the descenders, uh, I could not get the descenders to look right, so I had to raise them. Well, the problem was if I used if I used this set, I couldn't move them up because if I did, then I had then they look goofy with these. Now there is a way of doing it. I do have a character set that I was given, but they don't look very crisp and clear that way. They look kind of uh, pixelated. They look kind of pixelated. And you can increase the screen. I mean, like I could increase the screen on the Kettle Classic, but if you're using a regular TI, you just can't do that. So that's the reason why I did that. So. So the next thing I wanted to go to is the RAND. So I have a program here, like, uh, let's see this one right here. Let's do this. Let's go uh, old disk, what is it? Disk 6. I just wanted to show you this. So old disk. So. There you go. So they work pretty much the same way. The only difference is you get a lot more information. So I went back to that. Let's go to the next one, which is uh, six is going to be brand music. And I want to show you a problem that uh, the new RxB 2015 has. Carefully listen to the tune. You can hear how fast it's playing. And the reason for this is the random statement in the uh, program, where it uses b equals rand right here, b equals int rand, and then it uses a b equal int rand down here too. So the RxB 2015. As you can tell, it's faster. The reason why is because the RAND is, is so much faster in RxB 2015 than the RAND in um, uh, regular extended basic. Uh, I don't know if this will be a problem. I guess I'll release 2015 as a beta version, and we'll see if there's a problem. If there's a problem, then we're going to find a way to restore the old one when you need it. Um, anyways, so that's a, that's kind of the problem. Here's another one right here, which is uh, well, it's not a problem. This isn't a problem. This is just a feature. Now, this is, a, this is a TI Basic program. This is pure TI Basic. And of course, in Extended Basic, when you try to run TI Basic, it tries to use character sets 16 and 15, or 15 and 16. It has a call color 15, set 15. It won't work because those aren't allowed in Extended Basic. RxB, on the other hand, does not care. You can even use character set 15 for a sprite and use character 16 as a character set and it won't stop RxB from working. You'll get an error if you try to use both at the same time, of course. But you can actually run extended TI basic programs in RxB without any modifications. Of course, the EA support is not there, but everything else in TI basic will run in RxB and it runs faster than basic does, so you have a bonus. Also, now that it runs the RAND routine from TI Basic, the RAND is about the same speed, so you don't lose anything in the process. Now, the coolest feature of all. Let's load a program like old disk. Uh, just for the heck of it, let's load the um, Exus tree. Or let's just load um, a different program. What are we going to load here? Let's load the RAND music. Let's load disk 6. 
brand music. But let's do something cool. The program is a regular uh, extended basic program, right? See this? The program is extended basic. But look what I did to the load program right here. Here's what I did. If we load that program, well, look at that. It loaded internal variable to uh, internal variable 254 in extended basic, but it's only 10 sectors. See, extended basic didn't care. It doesn't care, so my new version, I can do this. So we have the program here. Let's stop this. Let's save the program. Let's save program to disk 6 load. Take a look at disk 6. Now it's, well, it still is. We have to do this. It's now been turned into a program image format. So let's load it with RxP. Same program. So here's what we're going to do. Save disk 6. And we're going to call it load. But we're going to add something here. So I can, I can save it as a different well, disk 1 load. I mean disk 6 load just like this. And it's still a load program. It's a program. But I can do this now. Save disk 6 load internal variable 254. Now it saves an internal variable 254 format. So if we go back here and look, there it is. It's now internal variable 254 format. Now, what is the advantage of this? The advantage of this is when you're cataloging disks, it does not confuse extended basic program format with editor assembler. That's the advantage. Anyways, so those are all the features I've got that I've got, and I will. Uh, Get back to you guys on this uh, beta soon. See you later.